So there's this one scene where um, I think Cody, he has stepped on a sea urchin and then it cuts away to a sea urchin. He's like, that stepped on me. That guy basically danced on me. And then he shows his broken. Balula to the left. <laughs> he shows the we broken don't need spine. to look at it though. I think about that every time we see a sea urchin. Mm -hmm. Now those are shows that I didn't watch. Okay, come on up a bit on Atalanta. It was a movie. I'm gonna so oh. let's keep that to maybe like 30 meters away in minimum, because I don't really trust the ship so much here. Kay. On the sonar, I mean. Sounds good. What's the uh, diameter of the Atalanta rings? 20. 20. Or radius, I guess. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Back on a slope. See where I'm at. <coughs> we have a okay. sponge colonizing yeah. another a dead sponge. Yeah. Where's the jokes tonight? I feel, I feel uh -huh. lost without them. Nope. Uh, actually, uh, we have some other questions uh, coming in. Oh, so okay, yeah. For the geologist on watch, what's your favorite geological era? So, like, what period in Earth's history is your favorite? So, I think, for me, given that. I have a geology degree. My favorite is probably the right before. Oh, shucks, I'm trying to think. So I'd say the Hadean period. I know it sounds terrible because it's probably one of the worst times to be on Earth because <laughs> it's basically all of Earth was not what it looked like today. This is about three billion years ago. Wow. Maybe longer. And basically the whole surface of the Earth was being pelted by asteroids and comets. Mm -hmm. and It was basically just a lava surface. But it's interesting because if you think about Still going about from a lava right planet to you know, a green and blue ocean planet, if you, you're kind of at the very beginning of what will become Earth throughout its history. And I think that's interesting era to think about. We don't really know much because a lot of the geologic record from that time is lost. Most of what we know comes from uh, like very small clues that we find from rocks that have been around for billions of years as well as uh, rocks we collected from the moon. So it's kind of interesting to piece together that history, but I think Different that's my rock favorite formations yeah. coming in here. Haiti and Eon, I believe. What about you, Dwight? Let's look here. Oh, I think I'll say the Cretaceous. I was just about to say, yeah. how can you <laughs> not say the Cretaceous? <laughs> I think it was uh, when the planet was hottest. All the polar ice caps had melted. Uh, Go ahead and zoom. Massive ocean everywhere. Lots of volcanic activity huge eruptions of major uh, igneous provinces. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, dinosaurs so. roaming the earth. There was a lot of uh, global warming during the uh, Permian, correct? Yeah, that was another era. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was uh, warm. Mass extinctions that culminated them. Yeah, okay, so looks like a primnoid. And actually, what is this? Um, oh, that's interesting. A squat lobster. I, uh, 
I don't know what that is. I mean, is me it? neither. It's um, a coral, but that's that beautiful. Is beautiful, and it is a coral. I think. I don't Let remember me seeing too many that look like this. Though it's pretty me cool. Me neither. Side. Yeah, go up. Uh, you can zoom out. It's all right. Pull wide. Okay. Should we Come sample it? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really a dominant No. Species. Honestly, don't know. Um, not that one for sure, but yeah. um, I don't know if you'll what be kind of to. sampling opportunities we're going to have here. No, I know. Yeah. Let's do some more research into that. that oh, a Chrysogorgid. That was a really, really delicate yeah. Chrysogorgid. Let me look. Man, whenever I think something is supposed to look a certain way, I'm always surprised. Yeah, that's a, that's a baby Chrysogorgia. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Or at least, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's better. Oh, wow. Ooh. Big sponge. That's a pretty sponge, yeah. Oh. Man. It's like a bow. Yeah. It's like a bouquet of flowers, almost. Yeah, right? Like a, um... Go ahead and zoom. A uh, coronation flower, I believe that's what it's called. No, not coronation. You know the ones where... You have a science class Ooh. and they put in like a cup of like uh, water with food coloring and then it takes that up in its stem and then it changes colors. Mm -hmm. I forget what that's called. What's the bridge Believe saying? This is another euplectelid. Yep. Atalanticella. Okay. Atalanticella. That's what it is. That's what the sponge is? Yes, correct. Atalanticella. That was a dominant uh, species in our dive, it seems. Camera. Let's bring it back. So, to, so for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome aboard the uh, exploration oh vessel. Yeah, that was Metallogorgia. Thank you, Connor. If you are really interested in and our dive just today, we are currently open yeah, for live to questions All right, to have uh, answered. Alright, full wide. Let's scoop back out there again. Thank you. Come up. So, yep. Uh, keep your questions coming and we'll be here to answer them. Wow. Man. Oh yeah, that's a lovely picture there. Yeah. And um, every time I say still cam or that, that picture was great. Um, we do upload the pictures, don't worry. You will see them at some point. Got a thick, thick sponge here. Really wide diameter. Oh, it looks like another polyopagon, actually. Oh, and we have a little fish in a still cam. I don't know what it was though, or where it went. Another Phoreid, another Caliphacus orb Balasoma, <laughs> I don't know what, another Atlanticella. <laughs> all the sponges today. Well, actually, not all of them, but a really good diversity of sponges today. Oh, yeah. With not many coral, which, once again, I'm so surprised. And I'm 
still wondering why. Where's the coral? And honestly, not a lot of other fauna as well. Um, we haven't really been seeing many. I was literally just about to say um, stars, and then we just come <laughs> across a star, <laughs> um, a sea star. Might, but might be some coral here. Perhaps. Perhaps. More variety of sponges. Yeah. So that the one with a bunch of spicules sticking out is, I believe, a wal wal Walterra. Can never say it right. Um, actually, kind of have to get a good look at them, but. Hmm. Alteria, yeah. And missed a syllable. <coughs> oh, let's look at, um, yeah. Let's look at that big stocked one. Oh, another oh, sponge. That works too, though. Is this a coral? You want to look at that? Ah, uh, that's a crazy gorget. We've seen that. Okay. You want to look at it? Uh, no, it's all right. <laughs> We've seen a bunch of those. Let's look at this big sponge here. Do you want to zoom on this one? Yeah, sure. This Go one ahead, is video. very long. If we can get a good look at the top, yeah. Perfect. Based on the stem placement. Um, I want to say, man. Yeah, okay. another euplectelid. It's an interesting Think. sea star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just chilling on the underside, catching the current. All right, I think we're good here. Thank you. Uh, catch right. up. Yep. Coming to the 20 mark. That was Caliphagus, okay. It's between Caliphagus or another Euplectelid. Great. So Caliphagus versus Euplectelid. So Caliphagus, usually the stem is um, on the underside versus the um, Euplectelids, like the Bolosomas, they'll have like a concavity that's not where the stem is, if that makes sense. Yeah, Caliphacus kind of looks like the more, I don't know, I guess like a, a moral, moral, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> like the things that you find foraging. Morales. Yeah. <laughs> Morale mushrooms. I would love to get into that, but man, the possibility of eating something toxic <laughs> just because I didn't look hard enough, that's tough. Well, it's always a learning curve. Yeah. A very dangerous one that is. So, I got another joke for everybody to lighten the mood. <laughs> okay. Go for it. So, another. why can't the stingray stop talking? Um. Hmm. Why? I have no idea. No clue. Because no it guess. can't watch its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. It's on its underside. Okay. <laughs> you know, I find that so weird how like a stingray's mouth is like under them like that. I fed a stingray and it, it was just so scary. You ever see them in like aquariums and see them swimming around and then they float up and s expose their underside and it's just like a smiley face? Yes, yeah, that's why they kind of so like scare me a little bit looking like that. <laughs> Oh, I think they're cute for that reason. No, they but scare me looking like that. They're oh, a little creepy look looking. Oh, never mind. That's just a mushroom coral. Um, but I fed one. Coming up. Got, um, right around the 20 meter mark again. Man, 
man, some really big dead, dead sponges. sponges yeah. Some a lot. Really huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can only wonder how old these are. <laughs> so, why are dolphins so smart? Uh, something school. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Because within three hours, they can train a human to stand at the edge of a pool and feed them <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a cat, you know, they, they're just there for the food. Mm -hmm. Yep. They tricked us all. Mm -hmm. The things we do for cute things. Uh -huh. None yeah. of these sponges would be able to do that, mainly because they don't have intelligence, but you know. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going to make cute. my cat start paying rent. <laughs> I, I agree. My dog's just start paying rent, too. <laughs> Since I've been away and stuff, my mom, she texted and said, hey, it's time for you to send child support for your animal. <laughs> yep. I was doing my taxes and my cat just laid down on the document and I was like, well, must be nice. I feel like we shall be <laughs> able to put our pets Not on so our taxes. Sponge. <laughs> yeah. I feel Ooh. like that should be allowed. What? A couple of them. Yeah. Let's look at maybe... Uh, this one, if we can, up there. Sure. That's a fit. Oh, gosh. Go ahead and zoom. Every time I look at a Latin name and I look at it too long, it just, it doesn't work. Ooh, um, what's that on it? Oh yeah, that's a not okay. Wait, looks like it's a brittle star. That brittle star, lost but a few legs. <laughs> I think it's a brittle star on top of another brittle star, actually. And look at the little tiny white I don't know star. The last, the last watch saw yeah. that. Yeah. The two. Oh, in I the see the two of them. Too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see the very tiny that's one? That's cool. Yeah, I do. So this is, I think, another polyopagon. Um, yeah, with those two stars on the inside. Cool, thank you. Forgive me for saying this, but this sponge looks like a seat. <laughs> like one of those <laughs> chairs or whatever you call them. Yeah. Huh. It's cool. Is a coral, maybe? Yeah, chrysogorgid. The They're bone. all the same, which is kind of wild to me. Yeah. Different variety is chryso different varieties of chrysogorgids, but generally only that family. Um, that's a shadow. I also always wonder what's in the little like nooks and crannies of these um, rocks. The what's it called? something space, interstitial space of these rocks. But we'll never know. Like in the little holes and stuff? Yeah, so yeah. like interstitial space is just referring to like whatever volume is left whenever rocks are like on top of each other. Or like, you know, the cracks and crevices, basically. Like we did see that polychaete that one time. Um, and we've seen polychaetes before. I think we saw like the butt of a polychaete last watch. Um. So one of the questions from our chat asks, uh, eel or something. What's oh. the max? Oh, what's that? Um, eel? A fish. fish. It's fish. not an eel. Not an eel. Uh, I that. don't know. What's that? Another fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that looks, I don't know, I can't see enough. Rat tail or something. Something, couldn't quite see. Two fish. But yeah, one of the questions was, uh, what's the maximum depth of Hercules? So Hercules is rated to dive about 4,000 meters below oh, the ocean wow. surface. Look at this graveyard, sorry. So Michael, if you have enough tether and uh, I think you can grab a rock somewhere. Huh. 
I wouldn't mind. Oh my trying. gosh. Yeah, I'll have a go at it. Um, Look at all these sponge skeletons. Like Something in here? Yeah, one of those is fine. They look like they oh might gosh, be loose. Oh my gosh, that is wild. So the current was supposed pretty to be tight over. with that lant on the side of the cliff, though. Yeah. I can't uh, see if I can snatch one quick. Yeah. Okay. Can you give me a couple of meters, Sarah? Coming down. These could be not. They all close. look attached, actually. Yeah. Man. From a little altitude, they don't look attached, but oh. <laughs> shrimp. Maybe this one in there. Mushroom coral in the background. Okay. These are bigger than I, they look too. I need to figure out the actual name for the mushroom coral since yeah. it's been renamed. That's uh, all attached. Yeah, this guy. It's called now. No dice. Never mind. We'll keep keep a lookout though as we climb up this slope. Yeah. Something broken off. Oh, it's still called Manthamastus. Okay. All right. Were those um, sponges or? Those are sponge skeletons. Yeah. Uh, so many, I, I know. Sponge cemetery here. It truly. Like, man, what happened? <laughs> Probably just accumulated over time, but really cool accumulation. Some more sponges to the right. Some more sponge graveyards. Man. Tough crowd out here. Okay, the new name for Anthemastus is Heteropolypus. Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Carnage. Yeah. yeah. So much. These must have accumulated over so many years and now they're just kind of chilling. Wow. Mm. Which is kind of interesting. I wonder what um cuz you know, a lot of a lot of fauna use these for vertical space, but now these are all toppled over. I wonder if things are using them for interstitial space. So like the space in between the cracks and crevices. Um, another ophitted it looks like Cuskiel. So do those um, dead sponges, do they decompose? Is there anything to eat them or are they just sit no, there? No, they are nutritionally like zero. <laughs> um, so sponges are made of like spicules and spicules are made of like Silicates and like calcium carbonates? Yeah, so nothing really eats them. They kind of just degrade over a really long time. They could fossilize too. Yeah. They fossilize pretty well. I think so. I don't know if we've ever seen any, so Do I want to say they degrade. Yeah, yeah, I want to take a look. Oh. Um, I think we're doing okay. It's going to be a bit of a stretch. Uh, Atlanta's so close to like side skirting that ledge yeah. there. Let me just see. Grab and go. Grab and go. Yeah. Ooh, like I do with fast food when I get home. Give me a couple <laughs> of meters. Come down five or so. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come down. There's colonization on one of them. I see a little baby um, eupoctelid, I think, on one of them. Oh, my gosh. Actually, I don't know what that is, but a little baby something on one of these skeletons in the still cam. Um. All right, there we go. Come on, rocks. Jeez. No. 
give us a rock. No. Oh. Nothing. That just breaks <laughs> off a little piece and the little corner piece. Uh, the daintiest little. Okay, up. I'm coming up. Up, 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 up. up. All right, I'm going to come up a little faster. Maybe somewhere, I don't know if you can get in there. Just to be safe. 20. I'll let him get back ahead and then. Yeah. So right now we're looking for a rock sample. We want to see what's inside these rocks. Is there anything you're looking for in particular? Well, I just want to you just see if it's uh, volcanic versus sedimentary right. before we get up to the summit. Right, right. Yeah. Right, so with vero manganese crust, be considered a sedimentary rock? Possibly metamorphic if it's altered. Hmm. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> that's a good question, though. Ooh, that's a fun Maybe. little bridge. Right. That's good. But it's it is good. a deposit, isn't it? Maybe you have to Google that one. I have no idea. <laughs> Um, another polyopagon, two of them, some Walteria, another fish. Not so the here's coral gardens, though, we were hoping for. No, yeah. I know. Our depth here we just passed something 16. that had some coral on it, but I think it was just more plexorids. More sponges than anything. Or paramaresids. I think that's what they're reclassified as. Dead sponge skeletons can get encrusted ferromanganese crust depending on water conditions, but they will dissolve. Yeah. Makes sense. So here's a question for the uh, ROV team. Uh, so how good at claw machine games do you have to be to be uh, manipulating that robotic arm? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so how good at those claw machine games do you have to be to use the robotic arm? The claw machine game is much harder than this one. <laughs> <laughs> I never won anything out of any of those. Oh my gosh, claw machines are the best. Whenever I'd like growing up I, we had one at our local little grocery store and when I'd like be in a bad mood I'd just run up there and play the claw machine but it was a <laughs> good one like you'd actually get stuff you would out get of stuff? it yeah. oh my gosh and it wouldn't slip out out the claw do you remember what your like favorite win was oh man oh ooh a, um, one time there was a tiny Alice little William. like yeah. uh, rocky um yeah, little Rocky stuffed animal with like it, it was from Rocky Four. Oh, oh, you bet! Like all my allowance went to, <laughs> to get that. One. <laughs> did you get it? I did. Oh, okay. nice. Oh, there was yes, four Rocky movies. Also, wait, can we look? Oh, oh there's, there's, more there's there's like more seven. Than that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my well, son they have got like a Apollo Creed one. Beats, <laughs> beats yeah, headset, first try. Like what? Wow. Yeah, like a hundred dollar. Oh, oh you my know, god! Headphones. <laughs> they're not. I would say they're like three hundred. Yeah. yeah. Times have changed. I just remember stuffed animal things. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever. And teenagers trying to put their arm up the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to go that way. Uh, go ahead and zoom. You, you just gotta be the crane. Yeah. But the. <laughs> oh. The arm on the yeah, ROV is crazy. actually the thing at okay. least starting off has a bit of a steeper learning curve than actually piloting the vehicle. Flexerid? Um, I'm guessing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The polyps look it. like it. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting though. Okay. I think I got a good enough view of it. Thank you. I'm gonna cross check that. Might be a prim no no I don't think so. Can we look at that, um, See if Connor pipes in. 
Yeah. That in the back? Okay. First of all, you guys can't tell me that doesn't look like an elephant. It oh, it totally does. does. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll give you that one. Mm. Are you talking about the sponge you just circled? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Okay, I see it. I, I thank it you. I, I see it. I give it to you. Go ahead and zoom. But now you know it doesn't. But you know what it looks like to me? What? So. This is Al Atlantisella, <laughs> by the way. So this is one scene in SpongeBob where, like, uh, I oh think God. Squidward got sat on and his face squished out. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Another Ferreira. Have you right seen below it? it. <laughs> oh boy, you guys are like okay. hallucinating at two in the morning. <laughs> okay, I'm always seeing weird uh. things in sponges, but all right, we're good here. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm inclined to say that yellow coral we saw is a plexorid, or a paramaresid. Sorry, they're renamed. We haven't seen any acanthogorgids, <laughs> but that wasn't an acanthogorgid. This is what he was talking about. <laughs> 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 it oh my does God, look like Louie, <laughs> great <laughs> pie. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Another halosaur. I think you guys have seen way too many SpongeBob episodes. <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you, I really haven't watched that show since childhood, but it sticks with you. It really does. It, it really does. does. I mean, but it's, they the still make new mark, episodes so you now. Know. You yeah. know, Patrick has his own show Which now. I'm That's mm -hmm. horrible. I haven't Especially. watched it. Yeah, I watched like one or two episodes of it. I was like, mm, this is not it. <laughs> Go back to SpongeBob. Yeah, I think I've passed that on to the next generation. Yeah. <coughs> I know my mom is, was big on Spongebob so it's like <laughs> it was a mess for me to watch I think they're, yeah I think they're plex stars I'm just going to leave it at that Paramore says oh my goodness ooh it's a cool wow. rock wow. feature oh interesting okay cool. here we go let's look at these <laughs> a little give me the coral the ones I know <laughs> Pretty sure they're just uh, Calyptrophora, but I want to look Let's at them. Stop em. on the winch for a minute. Yep. See if I can get them to shot. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, if it's not possible, it's down okay. to like 19. So I yeah. Yep. Boy, as soon as you get something a little steeper oh, with an overhead. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's oh about, about nice. right, around, right around 40. Go ahead and zoom. Uh, oh, so fascinating. Yeah, I'll come Might down be a bit a bumpier. Bit. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Ah. <laughs> mm hmm So dense. Yeah. I'm wondering. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's like yeah. a brain. Okay, yeah. It is hemichorallium. Cool. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, we're good here. Thank you. Okay. Full wide, please. Finally, something that's not a sponge. Oh, Don't get me wrong, these sponges are incredible. Oh, I'm yes, gonna say, they this are. view is just incredible wow. all this on. You know? Wow. There's a lot happening on that rock. Yeah. yeah. You can That's tell amazing. that they're happy oh, current. Like coral. Happy Still current. a lot more sponges than Ooh. corals, though. Yeah, which I'm so curious about. Oh my gosh. Ooh. There's another coral. That's a, yeah, it's a primnoid, looks like. More paramaresids. Um, Getting closer ones. to the summit here. Ah. Hey. Hey, fish. Wow. Fish. Fishy. Don't know what. It's okay. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. We're about two thirds of the way up the summit. Okay. A little ways to go. Cheyenne, I think your water bottle needs a seat belt. <laughs> yeah, it does. I don't know what to do about it. Do you have tape? <laughs> do you have tape? <laughs> tape it up against the wall.
Honestly, I feel like all these sponges could be like inspiration for like an entire art gallery. Oh, oh what was yeah. That? Squat lobster, maybe. Oh, shoot, I didn't see it. Yeah, the art people do with deep sea work is really incredible. Um, I got to meet an artist who did, um, she does a lot of art with like corals. And she like relates it to like networks and you know connections and emotions and that sort of thing. Um, her name is Rebecca Rudstein. And yeah, it's really cool work. Mm. I could never. My brain is not that creative, but it's so <laughs> cool to see what other people can come up with from these really awesome um, communities. Mm -hmm. You're <coughs> telling me your brain's not creative, but you thought a sponge looked like an elephant? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> I can't put an intellectual piece of artwork together. Let's put it that way. Drawing a stick figure is considered art, so just start small and then work your way up. <laughs> and besides, many artists are needed in the field of science, you know, to help with uh, yeah. our sorts of illustrations to help us with uh, taxonomy, for example. And it's a lot used a lot in the field, especially by geologists, oh. to uh, sketch out rock outcrops or cross, cross sections, things like that. So it's a skill that uh, is oh, needed can in we, science. Sorry, I don't know if we're able. Can we look that way? If we're able. I saw a really big something. Uh, it's an earthquake. Yeah. Is it though? I'm not saying until we look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I've said the wrong thing too many times. Anemone. Go ahead and zoom. Okay. Hmm. It's. A. Ooh. Now this is a liponema. <laughs> I got it this time, but the little <laughs> protrusions off it? Ow. I don't That's know. Cool. This is a what? This is a liponema. I'll type it. Anatomy. Oh wait, 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 wait! No, it's not. No, it's not. This is a relicanthid. This is something we haven't seen before. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay, let me get a still cam picture. Sorry, this is very cool. So these are. Um, Anemones, but they have really long, pretty um, projections. I was wondering what those were. Yeah. This is a relicanthid. Let me take that. Uh, I want to say, yeah, relicanthus. Yeah. Go with that, relicanthus. Okay. These are so pretty, and it looks like there's a polyke on it. No. Yeah, there's some kind of something yeah. inside. Let me see if I can zoom in anymore. Scale oh, worm right. or something? Yeah. There's a couple somethings in there. Oh, maybe gastropods, maybe mollusks. All right. I think we're good. Oh my gosh, this is the first one that I've seen. It, yeah, it's interesting how it gets so twisty on some of the... Yeah, it has like some curls. Kind of like my hair. Some curly, some straight. <laughs> What's your routine, Relicanthid? <laughs> Ooh. What is that? Oh, I always oh, wait. Whoa. That is different. Oh. To the right. Actually, we probably passed it. It's right. Scale worm. Let's see. All right, come down a little Kay. on Atalanta. Come down. Oh, that is a horrible picture. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Like um, warning for anyone who Googles scale worm deep sea. <laughs> that's its mouth <laughs> in like an electron microscope. Yeah, and they're gross. That's, that's horrible. You say yeah. what is it? <laughs> scale worm deep sea. But it, like the first picture is like a really detailed image of its mouth. From like a... <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, oh, that's nightmares. Electron microscope or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you can keep it to more like 20 meters Everybody now. ever watch okay. Stranger Things? Not really on a... Okay. Up and steep here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have you um, watched it? Oh, I love Stranger Things. I've watched every season. I oh, am obsessed. Um, I was going to say oh. this little worm kind of looks like the Demi Gordon. Things. Anything loose looking? Uh. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, well, there's one there that looks yeah, nice, that but I bet it's... Yeah, that's the center. Oh. <laughs> it's so hard to the tell. I was going to say, this one, or is it two? That's the one I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah. Let's grab it. Yeah. The Take our one? chance. I'll come down a little bit. A little more slack. That okay. definitely is loose, isn't it? Yes. Better be. I'm going to take this moment to I'm use the bag. I'm going to manifest it. Yes. If anything cool comes up, good luck. Of course, it looks like luck. it didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah don't reach the wheel from, from around here. But it's going to happen. Oh, that's right. That's the other <laughs> Bad sample. No, no, that's all right. Happen. Yeah. Any sample is a good sample at this point. Yeah. We just, like, take one out of the side box later. <laughs> oh, look, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice and dark. There's even, like, little finger holes in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is perfect. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> <good>. <laughs> All right, we got a rock. You want it? Uh, yeah. Yay. Cameras, turning on starboard bio box cam. That good enough for a view? Yep, that's good. Thank you. Sample tray up. Um, I've got a spot for it. There. Yes, um, you can put it in A. Sample cell. Actually, I don't need the cell, though, I don't think. Okay. Which bin is it going in? Uh, A. Uh, yeah. What sample number is this? Uh, 116. First one from our, for our watch? Yes. Okay. Yay! Close box. Close it Success. Nice. Mission accomplished. Yes. I can sleep better now. <laughs> so we do have to decide soon if we think it's wise to recover at 4 a.m. Well, the weather's gotten more sensible. Yeah, uh, a little bit. That would keep us on schedule. What size would you say about that rock was? I'd be having a hard time reading a laser, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> So that means we have about 20 minutes. Do you think we can make it to the summit? Mm, probably. Let's keep keep on trucking. Yeah. Okay. Can you come up faster than 17? Um. Lately, we've been getting up at about 20. Okay. Yeah, I say 18 to 20. If you really want to, you can just pitch a plate. Um, no, that's all right. I think we'll, we'll be done enough. Or should I stay? What do you think? What's that? Should I come down a little bit or just stay mm, where yeah, I am? Yeah, you can come down a bit. What's the back deck look like? Is it all wet from a uh, swash or no? Mm. Looks pretty good Ooh. from what I can see there. That's, That's good. What's this? Where'd he go? Oh. Oh. Wow. There you go. Oh. Cool. Oh. Sea spider, I think. Uh, I like haven't seen one of those. Woo. That's cool. Oh, I can blow it, blowing it away. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, Is this some sort like of then, then uh, oh. arthropod? Or is this a cephalopod? No, this is arthropod. It is a moon. Uh, no, I can't say that word. 
It's interesting how it's oh, yeah, using those small legs. Like that. Small. I so bought. Amazing. Hmm. Yeah, it does kind of look like a spider, but spiders don't really live down here in this part of the ocean, so it must be some sort of crustacean. So, Sarah, now at your back, can you uh, help us describe this interesting creature here? Sea spider. Um, these are, oh, isopod? Wait, am I late? Cool. I don't think so. That might have been something from before. It's too bad it's about these lasers. <laughs> Minos Minospid isopod? OK, cool. Oh, goodness Maybe. gracious, that's scary. Looking. It's an isopod. Just kidding. Um, actually, yes. I've actually been wanting to yep. see these. So this is actually really cool. Yeah, so it's not it's not a sea spider. It's a it's an um it's a type of isopod that I actually have never seen before. I've only heard about. But they do resemble a sea spider. Um, but I don't think sea spiders go quite into the water column. Like yeah, I was going to say, I've never do. seen one swim like that. Yeah. Um, but it looks like a spider, doesn't it? Yes, it really does look like a spider. Yeah. And don't worry, I love polychaetes. Polychaetes are one of my favorite things ever. Um, <laughs> polychaetes and nudibranx are, like, awesome. So that's whoa, a scary whoa, picture. Whoa, what's going on? Thrusters. Ugh. Whoa. Oh, did oh, we you're just... Tw you're spinning. Everything's... Oh, no, 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 no. Everything froze up. Oh, no. Oh. Come up. Ah, uh, I'm just going to... Uh, I'm killing the power. Come yeah. up. Uh, Coming yeah. up. Come up oh easy boy. on the winch. Okay. Reboot. Right. Coming up. One moment, everyone. Try oh. to have the ship hold. Uh. Okay. Move the, sh uh, hold on, get some altitude. Okay. Coming up at like 15? Come up at 20, move 20? the ship ahead at 0.3. Okay. Okay, up at 20. Yeah, so we're just gonna give the front row some time to figure things out. So please give us some. Is moment. your computer working? So it's just the Herc. So the Herc computers froze up. Can we get that rebooted? The whole top side, the top yeah. side of the computers. Wow. Is that something that's over here? Yeah, it's over there somewhere. Okay. Just a second. Give it the hard reboot. You mean fat finger reboot? Okay. Uh, just stay coming up still. Just keep coming. For now. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Six. Altitude. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the altitude is froze. Hurt cons. Right Here, let me get out of your way. Just gonna keep coming. Right off. Oh, God.
it's coming up now. Sorry? It's yeah. booting up now. I'm still coming up. That's fine. I can't tell my depth or anything. That's all froze, but. Okay. But just keeping it. Keeping it even. Do we have to do anything with the high voltage cabinet? Uh, no. Okay. Slow down a little bit. I'm still coming up at 20. Okay, um, I'll stop coming up on that. Stop coming up? Yeah. Okay. Too much stuff. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Why doesn't that screen want to stay? Oh well, that'll do. It was just a computer crash. What did I just do? It shut off. Maybe it hit the corner. Oh, it hit the corner of the. It, it falls and hits the power off button. <laughs> there we go. Okay. What's that? My feet. Okay. Woo! That was fun. Where are we? Okay. Okay. Bring it up.
we saw everything that sure yep I was about to say if you if you want to go do whatever I'm good yep it's all good yeah it's all good blue water <laughs> yep oh whatever. how's the hydraulics yeah pressure all right so Whew. for everyone listening we had a computer issue our computer just crashed Water. but um we're okay all right um but we we were going to descend around 2 30 our time anyways yeah. and it's about that time so we're just starting our ascent now so dive is done Takes blue water. about an hour or so to blue. get up to hour the surface. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> hour and a half. Actually, mm, hour. They're expecting the, at least uh, to get up. By yeah, it's about like an hour and, and a half. Hour and a half. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. No. So just sit back and enjoy the blue water. <laughs> blue water jazz. If you yes. have some smooth jazz. And if you have any uh, questions, you feel free to uh, put them in the chat. We are still available. Yep. Sorry about that, though. She turned. I guess any questions in the chat? Yep. Well, I think we saw a lot. That was a cool feature of that Minuspid. Minuspid? Minuspid? Minopsid? Minopsid, there we go. Minopsid isopod at the end. Oh, so we did see some cool things. Yeah. yeah, we saw so much cool stuff. Yeah. Yep, um, we saw quite the, the sponge city down there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you think we could do a recap of what we've been seeing on this uh, watch? Yeah. Um. We saw, or actually, yeah. Loopy, do you want to go over what samples we got? Yeah, I can go over the samples we got. So, to the looks of it, um, we got some pretty cool samples. One is a large angular black rock. We love the angular rocks. How many, how many rocks did we get? Um... One, two, three, four. We have four. We got that last rock. Yeah, <laughs> that last rock made it four. <laughs> um, so yeah, then we have a primnoid snipping, which seems to be like a pinkish white color. Oh my god, wait. Um, I was about to say, dark chocolate? Sign me see. up. Uh, we got a piece of wood. Piece of wood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, very interesting. And then, and what does he call it? Atlanta Stella? Atlanta Stella? Atlanta mm -hmm. Stella. That's a, that's a sponge. Yeah. They got that. Um, it looks like they got like a snippet of it and then they got a whole one of it. Oh, cool. So, yes. Also, thank you, Dwight. Oh, sure. 
the packaging is so discreet, though. The only <laughs> difference between the two of them are, is the red font. Um. Daniel? Hmm? Oh, never mind. I think they didn't change it. It's, it's supposed to be a... Um, Cold chocolate. Do you have a little fridge? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. We oh. got... A couple of sponges. <laughs> um, yeah, so it looks like we just got pretty much sponges, rocks, and then a firm know it. Oh, this is cute. It says nuggets. <laughs> Thank you, Dwight. Yeah, so nothing, nothing in the water column yet, nothing in midwater, but we're on the lookout. Oh, the scoop. I saw that floating around earlier. I wanted to stow it. Um, is there anything in the big, the big bio boxes? Are the big slots in the bio box? Um, like the forward boxes? No, the, the sample box on the side, the, the big uh, ones, the A side, and B. Um, yeah. E is empty. The e is empty. The forward one. Okay. Um, hmm. I could, I might drop it from here too. Um, oh man. Why the scoop came loose? It's, wa it's walking around down there. I don't know if it's going to survive the interface. It must have something on it because it hasn't gone off, right? But it's right. walking around quite a bit. Mm. You could probably toss it in the forward one, too, for that matter. There's a rock and a sponge. Uh, it doesn't fit well in there, though. I'd rather go for the side one if it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, any of those, E or F, this should be fine. I'll just try and do it all on the move here. Hopefully I don't yes. drop the bloody thing. Daniel, who do we have, um, like, around the world? Yeah, so we got people coming in from uh, places like New Zealand, Ooh. as well as the UK. It's about 3.30 over there, Ooh. or 1.30 in the afternoon, so welcome. We also got people coming Amazing. in from Czech Republic, Barbados out in the Caribbean, uh, Brazil, Serbia, Thailand. Thailand, what's up? So yeah, it's nice to get a representation from all around the world. Yeah. So welcome aboard. I think it might be tied in the front, does it? 
And we actually have a question from someone from New Zealand. Uh, they ask, have we ever stumbled across anything unique from our past on our expeditions? And yeah, uh, on one of our watches, and actually on this one as well, we came across a very interesting jellyfish. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. All right. Full wide. Leave that alone. And it is only the second time it has ever been observed by human eyes. Uh, previously, it had been observed on a uh, Okeanos expedition. Oh yeah, and actually, they Noah. saw it. They saw two more of them, I believe. Mm -hmm. Last watch. Yeah. Yep. So we're observing things that have honestly never really been observed that closely before. It's honestly fantastic. And you can see this jelly on our website, uh, on our YouTube channel. And we have a nice highlight reel of it. We also got people coming in from the Netherlands, the Maldives, and Denmark. Oh. Yeah. And you gotta go the Dutch. They're famous for Legos. Um, you can stop the ship going forward now. Looks good, yeah. <laughs> Maldives, Denmark, Netherlands, what's up? So yeah, sometimes we get asked if we find any uh, shipwrecks out here. And it's one of those things where, you honestly, if you're not looking for it, you may come across one and it could be a complete surprise. But on this expedition, we have not found any. But there have been previous uh, expeditions where we have actually dedicated them to archaeology uh, and I didn't. marine history. And uh, we did see, we did see a treasure actually on our our watch. We saw a PBR can. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> found a uh, a beer can Just at the bottom joking. of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> did you pick it up? We didn't. No, we didn't. No. But. It is something to note that when we find trash in places in the ocean that they honestly shouldn't be, sometimes it's fascinating to come across, but it is a dire warning to make sure we put our trash in the proper places. Mm -hmm. Ooh, watching this so always episode. recycle, folks. Oh my god, watching the sunset in Maldives, what? Yes. Uh -huh. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I love oh, watching no. the sunset here on the ship. Delaware, what's up? Neighboring state. For me, at least. I'm so here's a here's a question for you. What did Delaware? What did Delaware? <laughs> what did Delaware? Um, what did Delaware? That's a great question. I don't know. I'm sure people from Delaware get that a lot. Yeah. What? Wait. It's a punchline. It. <laughs> Get it? Uh, no. Think Can you about say it one more time? What did Delaware? Yeah. Like clothing. Where? Oh. The state of Delaware? No. Yeah. What did Delaware? Yeah, but what's the punchline? That is the punchline. That is what? That is the punchline because Delaware. So what did Delaware? You're I don't get it. <laughs> You're thinking about it too hard. <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <I'm all laughs> sorry. <laughs> My bad for killing the joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It'll come to you one day, and then it'd be like, oh. oh. It's going to be one of them jokes that you just randomly think of and just start laughing at the most random <laughs> <laughs> time. So yeah, on a previous expedition, we uh, dove down to look at a known shipwreck of the USS Independence. It's right off the coast of California. It used to be a aircraft carrier. 
and we sent on an expedition to investigate and do some maritime archaeology and when we came across it we actually found it was host to an entire underwater ecosystem full of large sponges, crabs, all sorts of fish and jellies and it goes to show that uh, whenever we find shipwrecks or any other mammoth features underwater sometimes they can be come home to other animals and become habitats. So in many ways uh, uh, that's how we can help with our, uh, excuse me, uh, conservation and preservation of the ocean. So many coral reef restorations involve uh, sometimes just putting down big pieces of concrete that provides a hard substrate for many corals to attach to. And sometimes they can become art pieces. Uh, there are many places in the Mediterranean Sea where they have underwater statues that also are there to become homes for corals and other aquatic life. Mm -hmm. Corals are what you call ecosystem engineers. They build homes for others. Or more scientifically, they build niches for others to colonize. And they also provide a lot of ecosystem services, like um, water filtration, uh, nutrient cycling, uh, carbon sequestration. Super important. Oh, we have someone from Gas in Alabama. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from Pennsylvania or West Virginia? I'm trying to think what else we can talk about. Well, somebody uh, from uh, from Texas here, they are giving us some trivia. So okay. where is the world's largest waterfall? World's largest waterfall. Um, something, 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 Southeast Asia, I don't know. It's actually uh, underwater in the Denmark Strait, which is located between Greenland oh. and Iceland. And it plunges down, and this is actually pretty incredible, 11,500 feet straight down from the Greenland Sea into the Erminger Sea, carrying about 175 million cubic feet of water per second. And it's actually formed from the different densities of water. So let's say wow. you have hot, well, warm water and cold water. Cold water tends to sink and hot water tends to rise. So this is just a big, like, cold column of water just sinking down to the deep ocean. Wow. Cool. But yeah, that's amazing. I never knew that. <laughs> Okay, here's the answer to what Della wears. She wore a brand new jersey. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I knew there was another joke in there. That's so good. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. Well, no, that was still, that wasn't part of it, but they added it to I it. I know, yeah. but that, it, just, it still doesn't make sense to me without it. Now it does, though. Now it does. <laughs> Thank you, person. <laughs> also I said it last watch but I'm gonna say it again happy pride month to all of our LGBTQ plus friends and our ally allies out there oh. sir are you from Sorry. Philadelphia oh. 
Getting whipped around. Ah. Oops, so for those of you who are watching our live feed and see us rocking around, that's not us doing this in sync. That's literally the waves making us do the wave. <laughs> so that's how you know we're on the boat. Oh, we have a couple birthdays today. Couple birthdays? Couple birthdays. Couple birthdays. Two. <gasps> Two. Ooh. Pa Pablo and TJ. Oh my god. Oh, nice. oh great. Time to get them a cake. Yeah. Yay. Ice cream cake. No, that's too much to ask for right now. Ice cream cake. <laughs> we'll get them the pirate hat. Isn't there only one pirate hat? There's I'll have only to share. room for one of them. It's June 2nd, right? Yes, yes yep. it is yeah. June 2nd. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's right. Hooray! Love cake, but no ice cream till Sunday. Upsetting. <laughs> mm. Just like the chocolate chip cookies. My Who makes these so restrictions? I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. The freezer on the ship isn't big enough. <laughs> I'm blaming Cisco for the lack of chocolate chip cookies. There's literally no way that they just like forgot to order it. They had to have been out. Breaks my heart, man. Upsetting. When you went down there, did it look like the cinnamon toast crunch was still there, or? The cinnamon toast crunch is all gone. Sorry. Yeah, I oh, managed to get a bowl before. Wow, that didn't last. It didn't last think, that long. I'm I think it was rescinded. It's I'm like the beginning cry. of COVID with the toilet paper down. Oh my God! <laughs> it just grabs it. <laughs> Soon we'll be eating toilet paper for breakfast. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, that I hope we're not my that heart desperate. If it's already gone. <laughs> No, I think Leela put it away. Yeah, I was about to say it was rescinded. Ah, nice. <laughs> Someone's hoarding. Our cinnamon <laughs> toast crunch we're, privileges have been revoked. We're rationing. Yeah. Although I like ate it so fast because it was only a couple <laughs> minutes before <laughs> watch. Was like, it was like everybody yeah. was gone, and I just was about to go to bed, and I'm I see a bag over there. I'm like, what's this? And I'm like, hmm, cinnamon toast crunch. It just manifested itself out, mm -hmm. out of the ether for just for me. So I took myself a bowl, and now I'm happy. <laughs> Must be nice. I didn't know the Cinnamon Toast Crunch was on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and now it's like, I'm I'm like... We'll have to find some for you when yes, you get off I, <laughs> We will. I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I told, um, I'm actually on TikTok uh, saying that if I could be anything, I would be a Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> All because I have like the makeup palettes and paint brushes of cinnamon toast crunch. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah. I was so Did it actually I taste like cinnamon toast crunch, or just look like it? Taste. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I didn't taste it. Now I just. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. But um, yeah. You tried that. You, you were telling us about this cinnamon toast crunch peanut butter, right? Yes, it's like a cinnamon toast crunch spread. Um, it wasn't too bad. Um, and then I had Cinnamon Toast Crunch Oatmeal. That was pretty good. That's pretty good. Those just seem like conflicting oh flavors to me. Um, I, I will say the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, uh, cake mix and, like, icing, wonderful. <laughs> I didn't wonderful. know they made all these yes. different Cinnamon Toast Crunch they even made. That's they even got pancakes. I haven't tried those yet, but... I was gonna say <laughs> these are probably all very easily made, <laughs> the, but the power of marketing. Yeah, it's just cinnamon sugar. Yeah. I say yeah. What makes the crunch? Well, mm. <laughs> how are you gonna have crunchy oatmeal? Oh, it's possible. It well, I mean, no, it was like it's like regular oatmeal, but it does have like um, little pieces in it. I'm assuming. Yeah, it's like little flakes or something, like little like extra that gives like a little bit of a crunch. Oh. But um, it's kind of like sprinkles, I would say. Okay. And like sugar crystals or something? Yeah. I think that's what it is, like little sugar crystals. Because they're like clear and stuff. And it's just like, um, they so just make the oatmeal regular. And then after you make it, you just sprinkle mm. the little sprinkles in there. And wonderful. That is my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Help yourself to more I'm chocolate just if you guys at the, want. They're labels. 
extra creamy. That's something I haven't seen before. Any more questions, Daniel? Mm -hmm. uh. So, can the ROV pilots explain what they're watching and what they are doing with uh, Hercules and Atalanta at the moment? Hold on. Sarah never had her headset on. <gasps> um, Sorry, I took it off for a second. Re to repeat let my that ear for Sarah. Progress. Maybe Sarah answered that That's one. What <laughs> Rookie mistake. <laughs> can you repeat the question, Daniel? Yeah, so can you tell us what uh, you are watching on the uh, Herc and At Atlanta cams and uh, what's going on with them at the moment? what's going on with the cams right now or, or, or what you're doing like in terms of the, what you're doing with the ascent oh during the ascent yeah okay so part of it um really it's kind of a multitude of things so some of it is watching the gauges watching the voltage um keeping an eye on the temperatures kind of things that we do generally do hourly checks on vehicle checks gauges make sure everything's working correctly pressures are right where they're supposed to be at. Um, also watching uh, how quickly we come up and making sure that Herc and Atalanta are kind of at an equal rate because sometimes one can uh, ascend faster than the other and you want to kind of keep them about the same. Um, yeah, but really just, just making sure the vehicles are are working exactly how they're supposed to be in, in all areas so yeah and elaborating on that like if there's there, there's cable management that you're doing too so like as we're ascending if there's wraps would you be doing that now or would you have done that already down below if there's what any wraps in the cable or the tether that is usually something that is like goes on the whole time we try and keep everything uh, okay um try not to get wrapped up around yeah because um, then that could could damage the cable and tether. So um, generally we don't have, try not to get any wraps or if once in a while it happens, we, we notice it kind of twist back around. So Got it. try okay. and rectify that. But yeah, that's some of it. And then we get to look at pretty blue screens, which is relaxing and, and you know, sometimes see some sweet stuff come by. <laughs> Very true waiting for our, for some sort of something to come by. Yep. Like a whale shark, maybe? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Oh my gosh, whale shark. It's There's been happen. lots of talks of whale sharks happen. on this it's expedition. I don't know why. It's, uh, it's we hope to see one. Yeah. Hey, do I? I want to see anglerfish. I've not seen one of those yet. What? Wait, really? Yeah. There was a Chonicops today <coughs> on the previous watch. Hey, Dwight. Yeah, a little baby one? It. I didn't see it. Wait, hold on. I took my Be Real with it. Hold on. I'll come show you. I didn't see it, but really? I need to like, go through the highlights. I didn't highlight see it either. All that kind of stuff. I don't think we've seen one on our watch, have we? No. I f no, I feel like I would, I would know. I'd probably be like climbing up to the screen to try and take a picture of it. <laughs> Hey, Dwight, you have like a oh, let me see, question let me see, on here. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. It's barely, like, extended. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You just heard the spiel, but it's that cute. <laughs> it's that cute. Right on, Jason. I'm going to need a copy of that. <laughs> I'll roust him. Someone asks, has anyone made cinnamon toast? Just mix cinnamon and sugar together and spread it on How buttered toast. A oh, little great. cereal go right to the dish is based on. I surprisingly have not made French toast. Um, I like cinnamon French toast, but I want to. So that is like my next little cooking thing I want to do.
What else we got, Daniel? Keep it coming. So what materials are the cables and tethers made of? That's a great question. I can look that up for you real quick. So a lot of our cables are, are fiber cables. And that's how they're getting the video signal and the control signal to us. Yep, like fiber optics and... Yeah. I believe they also have a, uh, they're wrapped around with Kevlar, so like a uh, Kevlar cord kind of acts as like the flex, flexible muscle of the cable. Yeah, it's it protected, rigidity. yeah. And our cables also have attached to them a rope that we use to uh, pull in Atalanta and Hercules with our crane. What's incredible is the wire that can go all the way, you know, down to 6,000 meters when we're doing our deeper little Herc dives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what amazes that, me the most. That is like fiber cable too within its metal sheath, right? That's just amazing to me that it could go that far and the signal does not attenuate. Yeah. They're incredible. That's a long way. <laughs> And it also makes you think about like um, the uh, deep sea cables for the internet. Those are long, incredibly long. And I just think, man, they really had to make sure the whole length of that cable is like 100% certified good because that's a lot of length of cable to have a failure along the way. But yeah, there is an entire industry out there dedicated to laying down this cable and fixing it. Yeah. Keep the world connected. I think, Michael, you were explaining to me that they had boats that are just kind of on standby in case there is ever a problem with the, the, the World Wide Web fiber cables in the ocean. Is that right? Me? No, no, it wasn't me, but uh, maybe birthday. Could be Dan's done like cable work. Yeah. Might be Dan. Okay, yeah. But there are like, yes, there's there's ships that are like specialized for that, and ROVs that are specialized for that. So if there's a break in it, fiber, they can shoot it like much like we would and figure out like where it's where it's broken and then they go through a big procedure, get it up on the ship, get into it, fix it, put it back. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. Pretty neat. I guess like the one that um, there's the ship that works with Ocean Networks Canada that we might be working with again this year. I'm not sure. I'm not on that cruise, but the the cable ship, the is it the Innovator or there's another one anyway. Um, that's I think it's the Innovator. It's based in somewhere in British Columbia, but that's what that's basically like on standby for cable repairs, like what you're talking about, right? And so something happens like that, and then it gets tasked and it goes out has its like uh, specialized kind of cable ROVs. I think they're a little bit like like tractors. I think they go along on the bottom and stuff like that. So I've never done it myself, but like uh, it's Dan, Dan's been at most things. He's got a pretty robust ROV career. I'd say he's done some of it. So another question we got is, uh, what is it that we see in the water column when we're ascending? All that stuff that we see floating around, are they fish, detritus? Uh, that's a great question. It's all of that. So we often find uh, fish in different parts of the water column, a lot up above at the surface, but as we go farther down, it kind of starts to thin out. We also find what looks to be some sort of sea snob, but it's actually a, sometimes it could be a siphonophore, which is a hydrozone, which is a bunch of these animals in a colony that 
uh, link together and float through the ocean and collect nutrients. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we find jellyfish, little squids and shrimp, and sometimes the occasional shark too. Yeah. And we also see a lot of tunicates. So like you'll just see these random kind of spider web with like a bunch of dots in it looking thing. Um, I don't know what we just went up on now on Atlanticam, but um, if you see like kind of like a circular accumulation of like little dots, that might be a larvacean house and a larvacean is a tunicate and the house is like a mucus thing, like a mucus house, I guess, where it catches a lot of food. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff in the water column. And lots of stuff that we can't see, too. Um, there's really small copepods. Um, like phytoplankton when we get to the the, the photic zone. The 4Ms, would you say, too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's all in the marine snow as well, which is all mm -hmm. the oh, detritus the and nutrients falling off the ocean. So, yeah, there goes a the fish. So, kind of uh, yeah, got to the point on that. Kind of tough. The only thing about midwater is that it's we come up so fast that usually we can't really ID anything unless it's like super big or it's super characteristic or something. Um, but yeah, the midwater is kind of a fun time for light chat <laughs> and recapping what we saw and you know any questions that you guys have. Hello, Haifa. Nautilus went to Haifa, Israel twice. Oh. I have to remember uh, when that was. 20, 2011? <laughs> 2012, maybe? Yeah, just, uh, Good work. That. that was a great port stop. Ooh, pretty. So yeah, what else do we have here? So do we see any birds on the monkey deck? Oh, <laughs> do we see birds? So uh, the main types of birds we've been seeing are boobies. And yes, that's what they're actually called. And they have these, some of them have these like interesting blue faces to them. And others are like big and brown, but they all just like to f fly around our ship and hang out on the front mast. And they're really photogenic and they like to just hang out. I think so far, the most that I've seen has been nine. But That's there was a previous expedition where the in, the yeah. Nautilus got raided by a whole horde of boobies, big and they flock. just big they flock just pooped of everywhere. They had to quarantine everybody inside. They as were they throwing dealt with up the because they were all scared. They were looking in the wet lab. There's like a, there's a window. Well, okay, the wet lab door is basically like a huge window. And basically all the boobies were like looking inside at everyone, like really curiously, and it was very funny. Ooh, some sort of jelly. Hi, jelly. Yeah. But yeah, usually we have just like a couple birds following us, but we can see them from really anywhere on the on the ship, because um, usually they're just flying around trying to um, follow for the fish that are that get scared off. We see a bunch of flying fish. Um, we'll see like some pretty decently sized schools of flying fish, and they'll, because they get scared off by the by the ship movement, um, so they'll come flying up from the surface. And they'll kind of like float. Oh, that is some a sort of noodle. A siphonophore.
maybe a sea cucumber in the back. I don't know, though. Question about the Great Lakes. We've done some work in Lake Huron quite a bit, uh, at Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Um, there's mm -hmm. mapping for sure that's done there. Um, other exploration, uh, lots of shipwrecks in uh, Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. I think there's uh, going to be a new sanctuary designated off Wisconsin soon, if it's not already, which will be another cu cultural her heritage site, I think. And so there's exploration work looking for shipwrecks and doing mapping off Wisconsin. Lots of work there. Uh, there might even be another sanctuary being designated for Lake Erie. Yeah. And com public comments for this, um, the proposed national sanctuary for this area close today. Oh, that's right. So get your public comments in if you have, if you feel a certain type of way about um, the dives that you've been seeing and the things that you've been seeing. We highly encourage everyone to get involved. Um, or at least I personally do. <laughs> get involved um, in public advocacy. See how things are done, how things are regulated. And yeah, this is one of the one of the times where you can take action as a citizen and make make your voice heard. So, uh, another question asks, do we have a 3D printer on board in case we need to make something? We do, in fact, have a 3D printer. And you may notice on Hercules and some of our shots that there are th some 3D printed pieces. Like, there are some uh, multicolored balls that with different numbers on them uh, that the Hercules arms use for uh, sample collection. Those are 3D printed, as well as the lens caps for our cameras are also 3D printed. We have lots of gadgets on board. I was really surprised to see the can crusher. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I didn't even think that was like a, a thing. Which logically, yes, but... First, first time experience with a can crusher? I didn't use it. I don't have any cans to crush, but <laughs> just to see it on a ship, I was like, okay, that's random. But it makes sense. Oh, shrimp. Many people always ask, like, what if we just take hey. a chunk of meat down to the ocean and just see what comes by to eat it? <laughs> well, oh, that's been done before. So really? say. Oh, yeah. A whole pig. No way. Mm, yeah. A whole hog? Did it do anything? I'm assuming no. Uh, well, they would. I think they would leave it and let it populate, oh. like with crabs and stuff. And, oh, uh, like a whale fall. Look at it over of. time, yeah. Like a whale fall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. See how long it takes to. Right. You know. I remember. I'm not um, that familiar. Ocean Networks Canada or in the early days. Um, they were working with a forensic scientist. Right. Um, and she had an ongoing experiment with them where they had the pigs and they would lower them down and had a video camera kind of platform stuff. And so they had them, some were uncovered, some had different like types of mesh over them to keep the bigger animals off of them mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And um, anyway, that went on. I don't know, I think there were at least six pigs, six pig experiments over a couple of years. Oh, man. That's cool. That yeah, was cool and, and nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cheyenne, I'm not sure he's going to be ready in 30 minutes. Uh, it might slow it slow it down a little bit. We have to get people. So here's a question for you, Sarah. Why do some species get renamed? 
Yeah, a lot of reasons. Um, usually it's because when we look at something that's um, just, you know, on a video, you can like look at it and be like, oh, I think it's this. But then when you bring it up to surface, um, there's a whole other component with genetics. Oh, something flying on Atlantic Ham. Um, there's the whole other component of genetics where when you sequence its DNA and you compare it to, you know, the specimen that you already have, it actually might be different. Or, um, you know, as technology gets better, as we sample more, um, you might just realize, oh, it's actually not this thing. So that's why names change. That's why classifications change. Um, and yeah. The study of looking at an organism for its like physical qualities is called um, morphology. And it's just, it's really tough in the deep sea because a lot of these organisms, especially like corals and sponges, they have a lot of phenotypic variability. All that means is just they look different, um, every organism. Um, even from characteristics that um, seem to be like defining like, um, you know, like polyp structure, even that can look completely different. So, yeah. Oh. But yeah, that's partially why we do the work that we do. Um, we need to see more of what's down there. See a lot, you know, see all the variation that we can see. Sample sustainably and ethically. And then, yeah, take a look at it up here and compare. So another viewer asks, what's uh, our favorite places to eat in our hometowns? <laughs> That's tough. What was the question? Well, where's our favorite place to eat well. in our hometowns? <laughs> oh. That's tough. <laughs> Loopy, I think I know yours. I don't know, though. Maybe I don't. Go for it. <laughs> Is it... Raising canes? No, we don't have that in my hometown. Oh, generally. you're right. Okay. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, I don't know. No, that isn't my favorite <laughs> place. Like when I travel, they do have it. Then I love raising canes. But um, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Cause like, um, I would say I probably have like two in a Zagsby's. Which is like raising cane. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, and then I would say Jack's, which I know some places might call it Jack in a Box. Oh, but yeah. Okay. It's like called Jack's in my hometown. Right. I know the name is different depending on where you are. Like I think Jack yeah. in the Box is West Coast. Yeah, Cause, but um, those are like my main two. Cause I am. On a fork. I will literally go to Jack's and just get like a boat Hello. of fries and yeah, <laughs> that's it. Awesome. Um, anyone else? I'm trying to think of one. Oh my that's gosh, not a chain so restaurant because my, my family is at Cracker Barrel a lot. <laughs> my little hometown was so small. We we had a big boy, which it was like really fancy when you could go to big boy <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> Um, and a Pizza Hut, which was like, you were really spoiled then. And then Ooh. we had like a tiny little like breakfast Coney yeah. place, which was always nice. Me and my mom would go and just get some grilled cheese and french fries when we went like special time together. But um, yeah, Ooh. I was very, <laughs> didn't have much in our little town, but in Traverse City, we have this French um, uh, place called Amical and that is, Mm. Absolutely fantastic. They're really well known. Um, mm. Amazing dishes, and they change it up all the time. And just oh, 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 oh. I love dynamic so menus. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'd say for me, uh, I mean, there's a lot of places in town that I like to eat at. But like I said, I don't want to even oh, change Jenny. restaurant because there is one. I just have to say Wingstop. I'll go Wingstop. But uh, in West Virginia, where I live, there is this uh, restaurant in the town I went to college at. It's an Indian restaurant, but I swear it's the best Indian food that I've ever mm -hmm. tried. I'm sure somebody else could make it better, but honestly, it's hey, that good know. that I had to work there. <laughs> The one thing I really love about like DC culture is that like you can really tell when something is regional and something is really family specific. Like everything is so, you know, every like family has their own different recipe, and you can really tell it when like you're at different restaurants. Um, for me, I'm not going to talk about my hometown because it's literally just fast food, and I didn't really um, eat out growing up. <laughs> um, but I, living in Philly, it's like I, uh, I could name a million places off the top of my head. But um, I'll say for now, my favorite place right now is the Southeast Asian Market, and um, it's in FDR Park, and it's basically just a really big like outdoor market where it's a bunch of Southeast Asian families um, where they just like cook in little tents. And they have all different types of food, like Cambodian, Lao, Thai, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Malaysian, everything. And it's cheap. It's a dirt cheap. And it's so good. And everyone's so kind. And I just love to go sit and people watch and eat to my heart's content. So good. People watch. That's a little creepy. Mm-hmm. It's so nice to just watch everyone having a good time with their friends or, you know, just alone, like, eating their food. Yeah. It's a really nice atmosphere. And you're just sitting on a, a park bench alone eating your food by yourself. So <laughs> I have friends at school, like, when we go to the calf together, they, like, want to sit, like, in the middle of the calf to, like, people watch. And I'm like, here I am wanting to be in the corner to eat my food peacefully and not be seen by people and you want to sit where <laughs> everyone can see you just so you can watch other people. Like, I you don't... You get over it. Honestly, it's fun. Oh, <laughs> what is this little top-heavy thing? It's cute. Favorite restaurant for me is... Uh, it's actually, they, they opened one in Los Angeles, so now I can... pausing for nav. Wait, Amber, I didn't hear any of that. Sorry. Maybe it's just me. Oh, they're just talk navigation talks and letting them finish yeah. that. Okay, so uh, one of my favorites is this Thai restaurant that they, Ooh. there's two locations. There's one in Los Angeles and one in Seattle. It's called mm. Arias. Ooh. So, so good. <laughs> Love Thai food. Dwight, you have a favorite place? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, not, not, not one place in particular, but Rhode Island's a very uh, foody state. Um, there's a university in Rhode Island called Johnson & Wales, and they have a culinary program that is outstanding, and uh, we have lots of great restaurants. So my favorites are the seafood restaurants, like in Newport, Rhode Island. Mm. Um, Fresh stuff, I'm assuming? Yep, just stuff right out of the fishing boats, pretty much. And uh, there's a couple of great ones. I forgot you work in Rhode Island and stuff. Yeah, you got to tell me the great the food spots. I'm going to be in there for a month. I, I know, need some great we'll get food. You. There's a place that um, is right in Narragansett called the Coast Guard House, and it's literally on the rocks on the ocean. And it's beautiful, yeah. and it's got great food one of my favorites. That's awesome. Looks like I'm at the experience food in Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> Coralie, if she if you can hang out with her a little bit, um, she lives up in Providence on Federal Hill and that's a mm -hmm. really um, sort of famous Italian neighborhood that has great Italian restaurants. Mm -hmm. And uh, just Providence in general has a bunch of great little places to find great food. Excited. 
Well, you'll stop at 50 anyway, right? But um, I'll go down and make sure. I, the plan is for four, right? So they may not be ready until then. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, we're 20 minutes away from surface, according to the computer. But yeah. Yep. I'll uh, I'll excuse myself now, and I, I'm not going to wake people up, but I'll give them a warning that we might be a few minutes early. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dwight. Thanks, Dwight. I'm good. Thanks, though. I'll take one more piece. Yeah. Some of the gold ones are... It's either really milk chocolate or dark chocolate, so... Mm, I think it's milk chocolate with the toffee. Oh, okay. It's yummy. I need to start dashing up on chocolate mm. whenever I see it. Nobody steals my chocolate and gets away with it. Oh, that bowl of cinnamon toast crunch is about to hit if we still have some. <laughs> I'm just over here thinking about it. I know everybody, well, some people in the chat ask if we're tired, and yes, we are. But I'm actually not that tired. I think I'm getting used to this shift, which is <laughs> unfortunate. Um, I would say, I don't know. I'd be having mixed emotions <laughs> sometimes when I come in. Um, because sometimes I do be a little tired. Sometimes I be wired and just up. Um, I will say at the beginning of this, I was like up and awake. Mm -hmm. I still kind of am, but I am feeling myself like getting a little tired. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. it do be like that. It just really depends if I get like a good nap in before or not. And I definitely did not get a nap at all. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't say. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like napping. I just like a full night's rest. Mm. Nah, I love a good nap. I would say, yeah, I can sleep all day, every day. It's just I wake up, then I'm more tired, and then my mouth tastes weird. And I don't know. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. So it looks like we got somebody who's from uh, uh, WVU in Morgantown mm. in West Virginia. Asking if I'm missing the pepperoni rolls from the mountain lair, and uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're nice to get, and they always sell them at the uh, the sheets that are around there. And I swear, Morgantown has way too many of those. They just tore down one, but they're rebuilding it, and there's like one on nearly every corner. And for those of you wondering what sheets is, it's basically like a gas station. So for Sarah, it's like Wawa up in like. PA. Oh, that's a whole fight. Um, or it could be like, I don't know, what they have out west, like Mavericks. Hey, Lita. But yeah, and pepperoni rolls are kind of a little big siphon for. They're kind of the one West Virginian cuisine that I can point to to people that's like, okay, that's distinctly West Virginian. But honestly, I feel like you could find it anywhere. It's literally just a roll with pepperoni in it. But it hits different when you get it from the state. And it was traditionally a food that many of uh, miners, their wives, would get them to uh, take to lunch as they were going out to the mines because it was easy and quick to put together. So it kind of has a history to the state, which really ties it there. What's the best candy to snack on during an exploration? Um, I've had a bag of gummy worms. Well, it was like a mixture of like the little ring gummies as well as like gummy worms and gummy bears. And yeah, that was my favorite. All right, um, I think my, I mean, I'm a big fan of gummies. I'm trying not to eat pork, so halal gummies, I guess. Um, but yeah, gummies, but I don't really have any left. 
But anyways, I'm going to dip. I'm going to go to the wet lab and start prepping the labels. So yeah, good night, everyone. Yep. Good, good night. See you soon. And if you are all interested, we'll also have, uh, later on once we recover Hercules, our camera for you will point to the wet lab where you can view us live uh, processing our samples and doing science. Daniel, do you have a favorite candy or snack to snack on during exploration? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I got a lot. So when I was in, when I was working at Bryce Candy, Utah, there were these. I, they sell them in stores everywhere, but I really got into these pretzels. They're like these South Dakota, like brand pretzels. And the original flavor is so good, especially with hummus. Like every day after work, I just like sit on my couch and I just like eat a whole bag. Mm. And it was so good. I should have brought those with me. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I was telling Sarah today, like, um, even though she's leaving us to go to the wet lab, but um, I was telling her today, it was like a lot of snacks I, I felt like I should have brought now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but all I brought was like noodles, Cheez-Its, and then a bag of gummy worms and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, um, Cheez-Its with like, I was telling you this earlier, uh, Mott's like gummy snacks. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Oh, you can also do a goldfish too. Mm -hmm. Goldfish are pretty good. But then it all gets stuck in your teeth and then you gotta like <laughs> take your finger and like, Okay, maybe it's a little TMI, but <laughs> it's uh, it, oh no, it, it's kind of fun though. I like I like snacks, and another one I'm a big fan of is dried fruit. So I like dried coconut and dried mango, and I brought a big bag of the dried mango with me that I couldn't eat because it, for some reason I kept getting seasick, and the thought of eating mango just made it worse so i just set it out for everybody else to enjoy you are the source of the mango yep. thank you yeah you're welcome <laughs> but yeah i try to keep my snack ideas mixed up So what's next for everybody after this expedition? Yeah, so uh, Lupe, you said you're going to Rhode Island? Uh, yes, so after the expedition, I will be going to Rhode Island. Um, I will be there for a month um, conducting research um, there. I don't know what research yet, <laughs> or the project, but we are still in the process of trying to get all that going. Um, I will most likely be working with Cora Lee, who is um, also part of this expedition. So, um, yeah, it's great.